And hello, welcome to this video of uh, let me exit this. Yeah, uh, .NET. So in this video, I want to introduce you a lot of new concepts. I'm actually on another computer now, okay. And I want to just uh, introduce you a little bit more about some convenience things I use. What I mean, shortcuts. Okay. Sometimes I like to use shortcuts and I like to set my, my uh, Z shell and everything in a certain way. So what I like to do is uh, use this thing called a alias. Okay, because normally I, I need to type ls and then I can list everything in the directory. But uh, there is, there's a way of setting a shortcut such that using the word l, just typing l will also do pretty much the same thing. Okay, how do you actually set these shortcuts? Okay, these shortcuts are known as alias. So you can type the word alias, and this will actually, <coughs> excuse me, this will actually, uh, uh, what do you call that? List all the available shortcuts that are in your system. Okay, for example, you can ignore everything else. You look, look at this L equals to ls cf. If you type ls cf, you actually come to this. Uh, come to this thing. As of now, I don't even remember what the dash cf actually means. You can actually look that up using ls dash dash help. Okay. And then you will see what c and f means. Okay. f here is for classify or by like by file type. And then c is to list entries by columns. So that's what ls dash cf does. Of course, you can set your alias to be anything else. For example, I can set the alias L just to equal to LS. And then I type the word, I type L and it's the same if I type alias to see what's the alias now. You can see the L equals to LS. So uh, remember that using aliases are very convenient. Okay, you might need to uh, set them every time you, you start your, your, your shell. But uh, it is, it is quite useful to, to have every time you can just press L and everything else will show up like that. So when I tap L as, uh, when I tap L, uh, don't get too confused because now I just explained to you that uh, L is just a shortcut for some LS command, a listing command. Okay, right. So, um, so next thing I want to talk about is the Vim, R, uh, Vim using Vim. And yeah, of course, uh, we'll be trying to edit these two files because index.cshtml and index.cshtml.cs, these are the main files that we need to use to change the home page. And just like the last video, I'm using .NET Watch. Okay, I'm using .NET Watch to uh, do this thing called hot reload. All right. So I can actually vim two files at once, index.cshtml, index.cshtml.cs. Okay. And to switch between two files, you just type the colon bn to switch back and forth. Okay. Colon bn to switch back and forth and colon qa to quit all files because you are opening more than one file. Okay. So uh, I'm speeding up right here, just uh, showing you. But okay, let's just open one file at a time, and let's let's see. All right. Uh, if you notice uh, something about VS Code, is that uh, it provides very nice syntax highlighting. Okay. For example, these are actually CS HTML. CS HTML stands for C Sharp HTML. It's a very .NET way of doing web pages. Okay, so it incorporates C sharp code into the HTML. How does it do it? Later, let's uh, discuss. But uh, most of the HTML code will be uh, over here, what I'm highlighting. And then uh, how do you get this uh, syntax highlighting? All right, so let's go and search how to get syntax highlighting for CS HTML. All right. So uh, the first answer will will you will see in Stack Overflow. It's a very very good resource. I mean, you can just Google all your answers. So that's how I like to do things. Just Google uh, things, and then you look for uh, several answers. And one of these things is here is called set f HTML. 
and that will solve 80% of the things. So let's let's type that command colon set f html and take a look all of the all of okay I'm switching to insert mode now all of the things will be in html and you see that they are sort of auto indented that may or may not work with your vim okay now let me close the thing and let me open again I was like oh there's this uh, I need to use this colon set f html again all right I need to set this thing called uh, the set f html again it's like you know it's going to be very inconvenient every time I open vim and then I have to type that command is there an easier way to automate this and answer is yes uh, you have to uh, uh, edit your vim rc file so it's like your your vim configuration file so to speak so you 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 type this squiggly line squiggly line actually stands for your home directory so uh, let let me just uh, demonstrate to you l squiggly line okay l squiggly line that means ls that directory you don't have to use ls in the current directory you can use ls for any directory you want as long as you know the file path so let's do it and you look if uh, if i type ls of this directory you will see that oh okay okay all my folders are here okay so uh, you can also vim any file and you don't have to uh, <coughs> you don't have to um, have that file in your current directory it's really up to you as long as you know the file path you will be able to edit those files all right and you you, you see there are a few things I like to have in my vim rc file there's a set mouse dash a okay syntax on file type in then on file type plug in in then on Okay, the way to the way to like so-called com, uh, turn these things uh, off. Sometimes I like to use is to comment the thing out. All right, so that's to use the hashtag, which is to, uh, oops, yeah, hashtag, which is a very, uh, very common way of uh, you know, ensuring that uh, codes are commented out. And this thing I'll explain to you more. It just means that when the when the vim is reading this configuration file it will not see any of these codes being typed so let uh so yeah to make code like ineffective and if you want to write comments you can use the hashtag for uh, vimrc or bash for that matter all right so uh that means uh when when uh you when vim reads this configuration file it will not look at any of these things okay so let's save and quit and let's take a look at index.chhtml oh okay i think the the vim rc is complaining that i use this hashtags all right okay i better better set those things off Okay. Anyway, uh, never mind. Uh, I'll just let you know that these these are the th this is the way I like to set uh, Vim up. Set mouse uh, minus equal a syntax on file type in then on file type plug in in then on. Uh, uh, okay. Uh. Okay. So, uh, what does uh, set mouse e dash equal a do? Okay, set mouse dash equals a okay so this is a, a way for copying and pasting in vim okay normally when you when you highlight a file in vim it will not it will straight away go into visual mode and then uh you cannot just uh, select copy and paste like using Control shift c and Control shift v so for example uh if i have this index cs html I try to copy this file if you try to do it without this set mouse dash equals a you will not be able to copy things like that and paste so uh, this set mouse dash equals to a uh, will help you do that okay so let's take a look at the second setting oops vim and if you ever 
if you ever come come into a files that you don't want to open by accident just press escape escape or the quit button okay press the escape button to quit <coughs> next thing here is uh, syntax on what does syntax on do well the the idea is that you want to have vim highlight some syntax so this is what syntax on does okay file type in then on and file type plugin in then on what does it do it helps you auto indent your code so that uh well uh, i mean here's here's what happens normally here's what happens normally if i go into insert mode and i enter to the next line all right um well uh, it doesn't auto indent to here like at maybe three or four spaces in now if you turn the file type indent on it should do that uh, automatically okay it should do this automatic indent kind of a way so uh, yeah so for example if I go to a C sharp file index.cshtml.c uh, sharp okay you will see all the syntax being highlighted in fact uh, when I when I uh, press enter here it will automatically indent uh, eight spaces in so you see if I tap enter it will automatically indent eight spaces in so the indent thing works for c-sharp but not the cshtml okay so how, uh, like just now we will we will do something uh, we will help to turn on the indenting by using this thing called set fhtml all right so let's do let's see whether uh, set fhtml does the does the job set fhtml okay we will instead of typing it with a colon it, colon here we will type it without the colon so that you know the, the syntax highlighting will turn on now let's clear everything up so I save and quit using WQ okay and then I let me go to index.chhtml and voila you look, look at all the code it's now being highlighted very nicely okay so again if I type if I uh, press enter it will automatically indent just because we set the settings as such so it's a very convenient thing to use with Vim and if you look at the index.cshtml.cs, I mean the the thing, the highlights and indents are still there. All right, so that is uh, some extra settings with Vim. Okay, I spent uh, quite a fair bit. Okay, so now let's get to the the uh, the real work, so to speak. Okay, uh, let's uh, talk about. Okay, of course I will I will just uh, put this here. And I and I tend to I tend to like to use Vim because that's that's my habit. You can use VS Code if you want. It's sort of faster, but I encourage you to use Vim first so that you'll get more familiar with doing things in command line. It's a very valuable skill. Okay, uh, and the more comfortable you get, the faster you get. Okay, and um, <clears throat> and then you won't be dependent on things like VS Code or anything else and you will learn a lot of other tricks in vim as well okay so uh so yeah that's that's my preference you can use vs code if you want uh, please by all means you can just type code and then you will open vs code for yourself right uh but really up to you okay so let's take a look at index.cshtml and okay just like we did the last video we can do a hello there or maybe we can change this to hello world okay and then you look the the thing behind you like instantly changes and the thing that's nice with text editor uh, vim is that you can this is a uh, partially transparent so that uh, uh it's partially transparent so that you can see what's going on behind you Okay, this is the XFCE terminal. It's a different terminal from the KDE Plasma terminal, which is console. Okay, so uh, that how do you set it transparent? I'm not going to uh, tell you in this video. I'm just going to say uh, it is a useful useful thing to have. Okay, but this is uh, this is based on the XFCE terminal. It's not based on the console terminal that I, I used to uh, I, I did because this is another computer but more or less the, the, the settings and the data is all the same. So this is perhaps one reason why I like to use Vim because I can see so-called two screens at once, just like that. Uh, of course, the other way is to have a second screen uh, of uh, second screen for your code. 
uh, yeah, you have a second screen for your code or you have a second laptop that's actually looking into this website, so to speak. I'm not going to go through that uh, uh, because as of now, I have not learned how to uh, do it, host this website at a different uh, uh, at a different place just yet. So that, uh, you know, another computer can actually uh, come and access whatever is on this website. But that's, that's, uh, that's if you have two computers, all right? That's if you have two computers which I understand maybe not everybody has uh, but as you go over time if you collect enough old laptops you should be able to do this because people will willingly throw their old Windows laptops away you can of course set it up with Linux and it will work just fine for this purpose okay so you can do a hello world and you can do a hello world one two three you save and you can see the hot reload working in real time okay so let's let's uh <clears throat> let's uh, do some HTML uh, because you don't really have a choice this this thing is written in HTML so uh, there are three blocks of code here one is called the div okay my well, HTML is very rusty so yeah this is called the div tag and you notice uh, you notice the div tag has a uh, has uh, as with all HTML tags, you have to kind of open it and close it with this kind of uh, angular brackets. Okay, so here's the start of the block and here's the end of the div block. And you can see the end of the div block is denoted by forward slash div. So here's the start and here's the end. Okay, here the class is equal, uh, you set it as a text center, which literally, well, as you see, it centers all the text here, which is not very uh not very uh fun okay so let's introduce you to some other things like the h1 class h1 actually stands for header okay so uh h h1 h2 h3 all of this actually stands for header so uh let's let's try uh let's try doing this h h2 and then of course i bracket it up with h2 and then i'll say uh this is my other header test okay let me save and let me open this up and you can see that this other header is h2 it will pop up here okay and what is this uh p p actually stands for paragraph if i'm not wrong the paragraph tag okay so let me do header tag so that uh you can uh you can see so h1 is a header and then uh, the other tag is this p tag which you see here so there are three tags being used here the div tag the h1 tag and the p tag okay html p tag so what's p tag p tag stands for paragraph okay p tag stands for paragraph so um, so this is some text in the paragraph so that's what is noted by the p so you can type in a second paragraph uh, okay this is my new paragraph new paragraph and then uh you can, you can see the thing load in real time and then uh, of course i can type in some nonsense here and then i save it escape and save it all right uh of course uh this is the nice thing about working in real time uh yeah so this is the proper syntax for html okay if if let's say I, I type in some nonsense things here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's see what happens. Okay? The thing will still save as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So HTML is I guess friendly in that way, or CSHTML in to be more precise. <clears throat> it's friendly in that way in that it uh allows you to uh uh allows you to just enter text like that and it is fun because this is under the div class. Now if I enter some code outside the div class, one, two, three, four, five, okay, it will sort of uh, put it here because uh, now this div this div is outside the, the text center bit. Right? It's outside the text center bit. But you see HTML is very friendly, it will just print whatever is down there. Okay. So that's that's a little bit of uh, playing around with the HTML, okay? I can just say I'm outside 
the div class text center okay now full stop and, uh, and you, you you see it will just be outside the div class all right so hopefully uh, this shows you some of the useful text with html and of course uh, as you can see here you are using one tag within the other you don't have to do that i think so if i do paragraph paragraph like that and i say new paragraph outside the div class okay and then i'll save it and then it will just appear right here okay very easy of course for uh for sake of organization uh, usually i think it's better not to leave this these things around because it will confuse people okay and uh, let, let last thing i want to do is to show you how to embed website links okay let's do a href html okay as you can see here there is a website link over here so uh so yeah the website link is over here and how do you type it well uh this is how you type it uh you can just type in here paragraph my link close the paragraph and this is how you normally write text right but let's let's take a look at this thing here how, how are you supposed to do it you use a a you use the a tag then href equals to this website link then uh, you you close it with the a so the the way to do it is to normally you just have a instead of uh, p you type a and this is how the open and closing thing actually looks like okay, of course nothing is shown here you need you need to type the link by appending this href uh, tag over here okay and how and then you you type in the link so the link is well i'm going to use this as an example the localhost link and well the link will show here and you uh, clicking it will literally type you back to this page all right the home page okay uh, if you want if you want to come to this privacy page here you can uh you can do oops go to this privacy page here you can actually make a manual link like so okay so i'm going to use the vim uh, visual line yank and paste to make a copy of this so that uh yeah it's easier and I, i'll i'll delete this and do privacy privacy policy all right so you can change the link here to all this uh, slash privacy because uh that's what we have here privacy and then uh let's save all right you can see the, the the things are kind of like together as you can see here the the a things are kind of stuck together so uh, don't really like that so what i like to do maybe is do a paragraph and i'll do it on a second paragraph to, to sort of separate the the two things here this is just more like formatting and stuff so let's do let's do that uh, we are safe and you can see that the privacy policy actually pops to the second line that's why you use the paragraph thing okay then my link is here privacy policy is here okay so that's that's basics with uh, html uh, so i think uh, it is enough for this video uh, just to acquaint you with some of the html code that's uh, available in the cshtml files so if i do index uh, i can also do other things like privacy html you can see that there, there are two things here two files i open one is index chhtml one is privacy html you can use the colon bn to switch between two files okay okay so vim privacy chhtml okay the syntax wasn't like turned on for the second one for some reason but um okay that is it okay last thing yeah okay let's uh
maybe stop here maybe i'm getting too long already so i'll just stop here thanks for watching i will see you guys next time uh, hopefully we can do more c sharp as well so for this video we just de dealt with some of the common html uh, tags i like to call it all right see you